Good morning, Mike. Managing Directors and Global Partners, here is your news brief for Thursday, October 1st, 2015. In an effort to circumvent capital controls restricting the outflow of yuan from China, Chinese citizens have found they can use their union pay credit cards to make fake purchases in neighboring Macau and other foreign cities. The process works like this. A Chinese tourist visits Macau for a gambling holiday and finds a willing store owner who will create a fake sale of goods that is paid for with the buyer's union pay card, but instead of selling goods, he actually sells cash that is then free to be converted into any currency and deposited anywhere in the world. Right now, union pay cardholders have a daily withdrawal limit of 20,000 yuan or $3,200, but that limit does not apply to purchases, so it is not uncommon for people to withdraw upwards of $50,000 or more at a time through fake purchases. Due to the large size of the withdrawals, almost all of the fake transactions are for jewelry or luxury watches, at least on paper. In some instances, the transactions involve gold bullion, where the buyer purportedly buys gold and then immediately sells it back for cash. The threat of another yuan devaluation by the Chinese government and the People's Bank of China has many well-to-do Chinese looking for ways to get their currency out of the country before they lose any more of their purchasing power. It is estimated that $1.57 trillion Hong Kong, or $202 billion US, is smuggled out of China annually through various channels like the one we just described, and the practice is spreading to Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea. The Chinese government has become aware of what is going on and instituted new withdrawal limits for union pay cardholders. Going forward, there will now be an overseas withdrawal limit of $7,854 between now and the end of the year. Then, starting next year, there will be an annual cap of about $15,000. These limits are in addition to a daily limit of just over $1,500. Some people believe that this recent crackdown is a signal that more currency devaluations are imminent, and casinos in Macau are worried that it will negatively impact their profits as well. Next, in June, China announced after six years of silence that it had increased its gold reserves by 604 tons and it reported additional gold purchases in July and August, during which time the country was also selling large amounts of its U.S. treasuries. So while most in the mainstream fail to see a connection between the two, Zero Hedge points out that they are more than likely intertwined. What it looks like to astute observers is that China is converting its foreign exchange reserves from dollars into gold. So with September now over, it will be interesting to see if the trend continued for a fourth straight month. However, as we have seen, China will report its official gold purchases when and only when it wants to. Meanwhile, gold withdrawals from the Shanghai Gold Exchange, which accounts for private demand for gold in the country, have set a new record high so far this year. Through September 18th, withdrawals were 1,891.9 metric tons, an increase of 37% over the same period last year, and trading volume surged 150% in the first eight months as well. Gold demand by both China and India are expected to be 900 to 1,000 tons each this year, according to the World Gold Council, spurred higher by currency devaluations and lower gold prices. And finally, the Department of Labor released its weekly report on jobless claims earlier today, which showed that new applications for unemployment benefits rose slightly in the last week, but continuing claims actually decreased, resulting in an overall improvement in the labor market. Not surprisingly, the official government data is in stark contrast to the privately produced Challenger Jobs report that found that September experienced the third highest number of job cuts so far this year, representing a 93% increase over September of last year. For the third quarter, 205,759 layoffs were announced, making it the worst quarter since the third quarter in 2009. Year-to-date, job losses have already exceeded all of last year's total and are on track to be the highest amount since 2009. With such a large contrast between the two reports and the real-world experiences of many Americans more closely resembling the Challenger version of the story, we think the government is going to have some explaining to do to justify its numbers. And that's your news brief.